The Denver School Board will now decide whether the principal fired for speaking out over safety concerns should stay with the district. Marshall Zellinger takes us on a drive over the Spear Bridge torn up by rehab work with questions about just how safe it is to be on it. Your generosity is helping to clean up a small town that flooded, then felt forgotten. Refugees living in Colorado are learning English in the most beautiful way. Song is such a nice way to, you know, get to know a language. And every week around here ends the same way, with pure joy. Whatever's good in the lives of your neighbors, they'll tell us about it. Because, yeah, this is the news, but it's also next. It's up to the Denver School Board now whether to accept or block the firing of a school principal who spoke out about safety concerns. McAuliffe International Principal Kurt Dennis knew he was risking his job by going public with safety concerns. This week, district leaders fired him. The message to other DPS employees is keep your mouth shut and fall in line, um, regardless of whether the concern is about student safety or any other important issue, that um, your voice doesn't matter. Dennis came forward saying the community should know that untrained staff members were being forced to do weapons pat downs, like the one that led to a shooting at East High. And he wanted people to know that students charged with crimes, including attempted murder, were being put back in class against the advice of school leadership and law enforcement. That policy, once it became public, was defended here by school board vice president Ayante Anderson. Like if the attempted murder happens off school grounds, then that's not DPS's call? Yeah, the, the, it's it's. I know it sounds uh, terrible, but it's not Denver public. That's the role of the Denver police. The full school board will vote next month on whether to accept or block Dennis's firing. If the school board rejects his firing, Dennis would stay with DPS, but it would be the district leadership staff, not the school board, who would determine whether he's reinstated at McAuliffe or reassigned somewhere else. Dennis has hired civil rights attorney David Lane. It's pretty clear he plans to sue DPS for retaliation. We will continue to report on safety concerns in Denver schools. We should mention, Nine News protects the anonymity of sources who request it. You can email next at 9news.com. You can text me at 303-871-1841, or you can send me an encrypted message via signal to that same phone number. One of Denver's most prominent bridges is undergoing some pretty public surgery right now with traffic still flowing over the Spear Bridge from I-25 to downtown. It's the one with the big green arches. Our Marshal Zellinger drove through recently and wondered the same thing as some of you. Is this safe? Views of Denver would just not be the same without it. It's picturesque. The distinct color and shape. It really looks good. From time to time, Chris Odia takes his work outside in view of the Spear Bridge over the South Platte. Especially if you hang out by the Starbucks here and over the river, uh, you watch it, uh, especially if you've just driven through. Uh, you just feel like, wow. But with age comes some bumps in the road. Hazardly too. She agrees. Yeah, she agrees. <laughs> Taylor and one-year-old Sloan have avoided the Spear Bridge since last week. It was very sketchy. We have chosen other routes that weren't do under construction. The Spear Bridge has been, hang on, there's got to be a catchier name we can call this thing. Sketch. That's Sketch Bridge over there. <laughs> Being close to a Starbucks here, um, I'll say, I'll say the Spear Star. <laughs> Archie. No, that is cute. Okay, Archie started getting Botox in March. So we equate it very similar to owning a house. You've got to replace your roof at certain intervals. You've got to replace water heaters. Bridges aren't that different. But City engineering the, manager Brad Chamberlain explained that the expansion right. joint replacement, the deck repair, and repainting the steel arches help Archie keep water out and extend its life. And so the paint is really the front line, um, you know, item that protects that steel from corrosion. So while it does have the aesthetic benefits, it's also a key structural member. For the 20 to 30,000 drivers that say hi to Archie daily. But I'm actually uh, looking forward to when it's completed. Archie's facelift will not be done until the spring. It's going to really add to the picturesque environment we have here. I think I have a better name than Archie, standby. It's a $17 million project that has to be done in both directions and in three places. Right now, the work is being done over the South Platte River and Little Raven Street. Then it will move over the railroad tracks. I know you want to know the name in a second. Yeah. Hang on. About half the cost of the project is the paint, or rather what I would like to call makeup, for Bridgney Spear. 
That's, that, Brittany, that's good. That's really good, man. All day for that? It took a few hours. That's good stuff, Bridgney, Bridgney Spear. Is, is this different than like other bridge projects around town or do we just notice it because it's like, it's kind of the only bridge that Denver really has, right, that people know? I will say I drove Park Avenue a lot coming toward Coors Field where you see the rock pile and there was a lot of construction for the last two years and it turns out, same idea. Okay. Making a facelift to make it last 20 to 30 years longer. And I never blame, I, I mean, I hated the traffic, but I never, hey, what is going on here on Park Avenue? But as soon as it hits Spear, I'm like, yeah. what is going on? Here. Yeah, Park Ave Bridge is fine. It's nice. It's no Bridgney Spear. That's some of your best work. Thank you. Denver's on a five year timeline to meet some pretty ambitious housing goals, and the city is going to use millions of dollars in limited federal funding to get there. Denver's Department of Housing Stability, what they want us to call HOST, started working on this city approved plan last year. By 2026, they want to create 6,000 affordable homes and reduce unsheltered homelessness by 50%. To meet those goals, HOST says it's going to use more than $200 million in federal funding and local bonds. Year one, though, ate up a quarter of the money. The federal funding has an expiration date. For example, American Rescue Plan funding has to be spent by 2026. HOST leadership told us the city's going to use the money for some one-time investments that then can be maintained by smaller amounts of local funds down the road. We're working to be thoughtful and intentional about where we can leverage those um, once in a generation funds towards the long term outcome for things like acquisitions and the capital expenses that are needed to help support our housing goals. That's complemented by some of our operating resources that are locally funded. Host says in year one, that funding helped create 560 affordable housing units. Again, they're aiming for 6,000. Eventually, they're hoping this year that they'll add another 1,700. The floodwaters came and went from the small town of Hayden in northwest Colorado back in April and left about 50 homes seriously damaged. But then the help never really arrived. No emergency declaration, no flood insurance for most people because they're not in a flood zone. So now, months later, the homes are growing mold, the drywall insulation, the floors are still wrecked. You should be honest, this is, this is not an affluent area. It's a lot of folks who are just getting by and they don't have the money to repair the damage. Now they're worried their homes will be condemned. Since Wednesday, you have stepped up with almost $40,000 in Word of Thanks Microgiving to help Hayden. The Hayden Flood Relief Fund is waiving any fees, so every dollar is going to go to people in town who need help. It will be available first to those most in need, and the town leaders are, are going to handle getting the funds to vendors. So it's folks who know what's going on up there. Scan the QR code on your screen or text the word thanks to 303-871-1491 to join me and a bunch of other Coloradans in making a donation. Your $5 contributions add up big time, week by week, year by year. Since 2020, you've raised more than $11 million for Colorado's nonprofits through Word of Thanks. Music. It's the universal language. So how smart that that's a way that refugees here are finding their voice and finding a community. Mother Nature has handed us a get out of drought free card. Last few years show how quickly it can be revoked. And we will end the week the way we always do, with pure joy. Your good news, next. One of the wettest months the Front Range has ever seen just wipe the drought off the map. In fact, the latest drought map is just a map. It's like a color and outline of the state, not a speck of drought conditions anywhere on there. Compare that to the end of 2022. At that point, 86% of the state was abnormally dry or worse. 31% was under severe drought conditions. Last time we were drought free, Chris Bianchi was summer of 2019. I, part of me worries, though, that there are going to be folks who see that and see this wet period of weather that we've uh, seen and think, well, you know, drought in the West was overblown. We're going to be good. Look at this. Yeah, it's a really good point, Kyle, because all it takes is a dry month or two. And 
I don't want to allude too much to 2021, what happened with the Marshall Fire. Those were exceptional conditions that led up to it. But you might remember that spring and summer were really, really wet here across Colorado. And then snap of a finger, it turned really dry and basically stopped raining along the Front Range for three months. And that led up to those extreme conditions that led to the Marshall Fire. In the meantime, though, it really is important to just kind of soak in, literally, here, the, in the very, very uh, good map that we've had here and the amount of water that we've had over the course of the last couple of months. So getting a bit more here on this Friday evening, Colorado Springs, boy, just getting blasted with heavy rain and also some hail. We've seen up to golf ball sized hail at the Peterson Air Force Base had an earlier tornado warning on the southwest side of El Paso County that has since expired, but still very active weather in Colorado Springs for us here in Denver calmer, but we are seeing some showers out there, especially north of I-70, not expecting much in the way of severe weather here along the front range, but a few showers and some rumbles of thunder, maybe some small hail within some of these storms. That said, these will kick off to the east, southeast Colorado. That's where you could see some of the stronger storms later on this evening. Very busy night out there last night and could see some more strong storms out that way for tonight as well. For tonight, temperatures here in Denver, mid 50s for us, early storms. Those will clear on up tomorrow. More storms possible tomorrow afternoon. Good news is one more day. Repeat after me. One more day of these strong to potentially severe storms. And then guess what happens? We're talking about a much calmer and much drier weather pattern starting on Sunday and lasting through most of next week. Crispy Donkey, thank you. There's a nonprofit in our community using song to help immigrant women learn English. Our Angelie McCall shows us why they're hoping that this strategy makes a difference in far more than just language skills. Good morning. Come in, come in. For immigrants and refugees, okay, finding community yeah. is difficult in a new place. And kandha, shoulders up and back. This is a place where they can be themselves. And come back one more time with new friends in the same situation. We're going to talk about why we are happy, okay? One line, why we are happy. But Dipali Lindblom will push them out of what they know. No, she's doing that, but we want her to speak English. A lot of us immigrants always feel outsider because we do not speak good English enough and we do not have the confidence to speak. So I tell them that even if they're wrong, they must open their mouth because something happens when you open and you speak. They're trying to make the difficult process of learning a new language easier through nonprofit Roshni's Sew and Sing program. English is my fifth language and primarily I've learned it through songs while you know going, growing up in India and I felt like song is such a nice way to you know, get to know a language and, you know, learn new words. It's a place where they share their culture. And they learn the language of a new one. It uh, gives me a positive energy and uh, I love it. Uh, learning English more better. Suhaila wants to learn English as much as sewing. I want it to be very, very nice dress, but uh, I not see in the America, it's very good dress for me. That's why I wanted to make a, a very good style for myself. And Dipali hopes they learn more than just skills as they transition to a new life. Not only are you learning a language, you're also building the confidence to speak. And that confidence not just stays with language, it goes into other spheres of your life. To Polly with the nonprofit, Roshni says they hope that just as much as they provide additional language skills, they also want to ensure that women can find community and meet other people who speak their language or have come from their same country because being in a new place can be really isolating. I, I just think it's such a wonderful idea all around. It's such a joyful way to learn a language and to do it with to do it with friends. And then you walk out of there with a bond that's more than just the language. It's that shared experience. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. And I speak Spanish, and I feel like I've learned a lot of new words um, through listening listening to different songs from different countries. That you know the dialect is a little bit different, and so it really does work. Like I've seen it in myself. I've seen it in my friends. Um, and so when you really lean into it, it is a really cool tool to use. And you know, it's really a creative way to learn English. Um, it doesn't have have to be, you know, the traditional classroom setting that we always think of. All right, good stuff. Angelina McCall, thank you. My good news is that I'm here at the Black Arts Festival again and I get to celebrate my culture. 
Black artists are in the spotlight this weekend. It is their good news. It'll be front and center. And the mystery of some roadside classics has stuck with one next viewer for years. We're going to solve a little mystery next. Tonight's next question has been bugging one viewer for years. Tom was out east in Cope, Colorado, when he saw this embankment studded with old cars and wanted to know how they got there. Is this a bunch of old accidents, an art installation? What is it? So Tom, we love a, a good mystery with some history. So we reached out to the Washington County Road and Bridge Department. They said that those cars have been partially buried in that embankment since the 50s or 60s, and it was to keep the soil from eroding because they had a series of large floods. Apparently, that creek hasn't been dry forever. At the time the cars went in, they were not classics. They were just junkers. They were wrecked. So they were installed there as a cheap solution to the erosion problem in Cope. That's pretty cool. Week 358 of your good news. We went to find it among the good vibes, the Black Arts Festival in City Park West. All of us here are putting out this positive and enlightening energy and just ready to do it. And we're getting it all back and it feels so great. They should come to this festival because one, it, it just really dignifies what black culture is all about. There's nothing but African wear, there's nothing but jewelry, nothing but good food, good times, good vibes, good music. Like, it's. It's a wonderful experience. My good news is that I'm here at the Black Arts Festival again, and I get to celebrate my culture. Yeah. My good news is that I have a god baby on the way, <laughs> and that is very nice. My good news is that I got married this year to my beautiful fiance, and I'm so excited to spend the rest of my life with her. My good news is every day that I'm alive, I'm out here, I'm celebrating, I'm doing it. We'll start with harmonic. My good news is I'm back at the Black Arts Festival after two years and I'm playing my violin with my brother and hopefully we can come back next year and we'll be five times better. My good news is that I've been here for my friends and I watched them perform. And that's all I could have asked for today. How does it feel to be five? Uh, it makes me happy. My good news is that my artwork is being picked up by uh, an international company. My good news is that I'm finally living in my purpose. I like the cosmic energy. So that's my good news today, is I'm living in my purpose, so you need to live in your purpose. It's really a good experience to come out to the Black Arts Festival and really see what it's about. How does it feel to be five? Makes me happy. That's awesome. Black Arts Festival is going on all weekend. See Park West. Free music, art, and joy. Here's your feedback. I'm guessing it's DPS. It is DPS. That's next. The most Colorado thing we saw today is actually oceans away. Josh brought some Colorado pride along for his hike to the top of Machu Picchu. Now the Sacred Valley knows nuggets are good. Man, he, he was fast. Got that right up the hill. If you see something that says Colorado to you, no matter where in the world it is, send it to next at 9news.com use the hashtag hey next. Lou writes in tonight, Denver Public Schools is forging a very fragile path punishing those speaking out in favor of the safety of students, employees, and the public. Kudos for the continuing coverage. Fair point comes in from Diana tonight, who says, why have you not pointed out that this is happening in other public schools in the metro area in terms of pat-downs and safety issues? We certainly did talk about that some months back, Diana. I think the reason why the conversation has kind of lingered and centered around DPS is, is one, the number of shootings within the past year in and around DPS schools, and two, the fact that there is a very robust debate within DPS about what safety and security looks like. If other metro area districts dive into that same conversation, we'll cover it there as well. And finally, via text, lived here my whole life, never thought of having a name for the Spear Bridge. As far as I am concerned, the name is Bridgney Spear from here on out. Well done, Marshall. Well done, Marshall, indeed. Have a great weekend. See you next time.